can do all sorts of interesting things with images and with morph. Here's a little sequence, for example, where you might want to show different devices and different screen sizes. Well, why don't we maybe use that like a carousel to be able to highlight one and then another and another and another? And maybe there could be some content above to show examples of what's going on in those areas. This is also done using, using Morph in an elegant way. I've got here a sequence with the, um, the different devices there set up. If we then take this, copy and paste this slide, so you've got two of them, take these other devices, move them over to the right hand side, perhaps shrink them down a bit, and also use this um, picture format tab on the ribbon here to modify them. Now, if I select one of them, what I can do there is add in an artistic effect that allows me to blur it out. So you can take this and also blur it and take this and blur it out like that as well. Bring the phone in, put that in the center, perhaps make it a touch larger so this can come out there. And what that will allow me to do now is if I apply the morph transition to it, move all these across, blur those out, make this larger, and then we're going to copy and paste that slide shrink that down a touch there like that, move this over here, move all of these over there like that. This can go in the center and be larger and this time I'm going to get rid of the artistic effect on that one and add it onto this. So nice and easy there in the way that it's done with a more transition applied to that. You now have a nice three-sided little sequence where it's going to go to take a look at this one first and then we're going to take a look at that one and so on and so forth all the way through. And that would be lovely and we could leave it there, but you want more. So why don't we, if we're going to have content that represents the screen, why don't we show that? Using some nice glass morphism, for example, to be able to emphasize the size of the screen. Maybe you can have, you know, content that goes on there as well. And I love this because this idea of glass morphism stuff is really something that morph <laughs> allows you to do very well. The way that this works is to not only manipulate all the content underneath, but also modify the background image that you've got here. So what I'm gonna do is copy and paste this image, so I've got two of them, line them up on top of each other and just send them back behind everything else. And then I'm going to crop this so that I've got it cropped to just the area of, say, the phone like that. That'll do. And then once you've got that, if you just put an outline around it so you can see what's going on, you just get a regular crop. Yeah, great, you know how to do that, Richard. But if you go to picture formats and go to crop on the right hand side, you can choose to crop to a shape. And you can use any shape in PowerPoint, including something like the rounded corners here. And then you've also got the little adjustment handle so you can get nice kind of tight corners there so it looks neat. And you don't just have to leave it as an outline, you could also go to picture effect and add maybe a shadow to the outside of it so that it looks more like a lens that's floating. Let's get rid of that outline again now so you can see it. And then of course add in that artistic effects and blur like that. Now what I'm going to do is copy this actually two more times. So I've got three versions of it. In the middle one, I'm going to leave it as is. On the final one, I'm going to now make this larger. So I'm going to use crop and increase the size of the crop window there so it gets a little bit larger there like that. Maybe drop this down there. And let's also just change that adjustment handle. And if you apply the morph transition, what's going to happen is it's going to morph across to give you that effect. Why did I create three of them though? Well, on the first one, I'm going to go back and I'm going to move this object all the way down off the edge of the slide. Well, why would I do that? Well, it's to try and bring it in nicely. But of course, if you apply morph to this slide, well, that doesn't work because it's just moving it up. You lose the glass morphism. However, the neat trick here is to take this first slide object, which is off the edge, open up the crop tool and move the image up so that it fits where it should on the slide. And you've now got nothing there at all. It's because it's a crop window onto nothing. But the advantage of that is that in slideshow mode, you've got something all the way off the edge of the slide, 
and it will then crop up and give you that effect so that it looks like it's floating onto the slide and it just adds to the sense of realism in what you're doing. So some really interesting stuff that you can do with Morph to bring things to life. 